This is Jared Horak for TheRunawayHorse.com and this is my second video for Saturday, September 18th, 2021. We're on the road to Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks 2022 with the first two points races. I just did the Oaks points race for Saturday, September 18th. That was the Grade 3 Pocahontas Stakes. In this video, I'm going to do the Grade 3 Iroquois Stakes from Churchill Downs. If you're interested in my full cards from Santa Anita Park, they will start up again the month of October. So the whole month of October, each day Santa Anita runs, I will be covering those full cards. You can find those full cards at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. I have some free selections across different websites that I'll, off, I'll be providing the links uh, to those uh, free selections in the description in this video if you're interested in those. Let's jump into the analysis of this Kentucky Derby 2022 first points race of the year. Um, 10 points to the winner, 4 for 2nd, 2 for 3rd, 1 for 4th, and this will be the ninth race from Churchill Downs for Saturday, September 18th, the Grade 3 Iroquois Stakes. Purse is $300,000. This race is for 2-year-olds, and they will be traveling a mile and a 16th on the main track, and the post time is scheduled for 10, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Number 1, Tough to Tame for trainer Chris Davis. Uh, this one, 3 career starts, first 2 starts at Arlington. Finished the distance second in the debut, uh, broke through with a maiden win, stalking the pace second time out, and then switched to um, conventional dirt at Indiana Grand on August 5th, and she won that one. Oh, he won that one, stalking the pace. So now he's going to stretch out in distance. Uh, his speed figures are improving, but he's going to have to run faster again in his fourth start and first start around two turns. Uh, number two in here is Lucky Boss for trainer Ken McPeak. Street Boss is the sire for this one. Uh, and he's one that uh, didn't fire in the debut as the beaten favorite was fourth beaten six lengths. Came back second time out, a race on Ridgely scheduled for the turf, run on a good main track at Ellis Park, uh, dueled on the lead, uh, the pace was slow, and won that one nicely by a length and a half. The runner-up was the next out winner. First start against winners, the Ellis Park Juvenile at seven furlongs last time out. Stuck the pace from third, missed by a half length, a decent second place finish at 8-1 to one odds. So if, he, if this one can get two turns, we'll probably be stalking the pace. He's, as I mentioned, he was up on the pace in, in his three starts, but the pace figures were pretty, pretty low in, in his last two starts. So he's not super quick, uh, but I think he can be at least within striking range. Roger McQueen is number three. And this one, back-to-back uh, -back victories, broke the maiden at Ellis Park at five furlongs on a good track, dueling on the lead, won that one by five lengths, came back in the Ellis Park Juvenile, dueled on the lead, held on by a half length, showed nice determination in that one. And that was his best speed figure so far as well. So now he's going to stretch out in distance, doesn't have a super strong uh, distance pedigree, but he should be part of the pace. They paid 530000 for this one. The four strike hard, uh, this one coming in from Gulfstream Park, the career debut, uh, slow start, rallied wide, finished third. That was a good experience run at 23 to 1 odds. Second time out, went off at 40 cents on the dollar and won nicely. Stalked the pace at one mile around one turn and won by more than two lengths. So that was a nice effort and a good speed figure that, that he earned that day as well. So now we're going to see if he can ship away from Gulfstream and run a quality race on the road. Uh, the four Magnolia in the five Magnolia Midnight. This one for trainer Dallas Stewart uh, in the career debut Colonial Downs, a five furlong turf race. wasn't really a serious threat. Uh, took some money. He was fourth, beaten almost seven lengths. He just did miss third. He was only a neck out of third. Uh, not a terrible debut. It was more of an education run. And then second time out, a race of really scheduled for the turf at, at Colonial Downs. Moved to the main track. It was a fast main track. Was up on the pace. He won by seven lengths. The pace was slow that day. It was more of a slow early, uh, faster late type race and, and just pulled well clear. So he's one that he has some ability and maybe some, uh, we're going to find out. Like uh, I'm not sure how far he wants to go, but I like the speed figure improvement second time out. But I'm always skeptical of those horses that break their maiden on, on tracks and that were in, in races that were originally scheduled for the turf course. But you're just not sure how deep those fields are because a lot of those runners wanted to run on turf. The sixth stellar tap for trainer Steve Asmussen. Really good pedigree here. Tap it is the sire. Medallia d'Oro, the dam sire. Certainly bred to go on and run a, a route of ground. They paid 250000 for this one at the 2020 Keeneland September sales. And the debut was good. 
seven furlongs and battled on the pace. It's never easy to win a debut at seven furlongs, but this one did that just that, battled on the pace. The pace was solid enough and pulled well clear to win by more than five lengths. The clear second place finisher, keep calm, carry on for trainer Ty Pletcher, uh, came back and broke his maiden as the favorite in his next start. So Stellar Tap beat a decent horse in the debut, stretching out after that effort. Uh, don't really see that there's going to be a big issue with the extra distance of this race. Red Knobs number seven. This one is a son of Union Rags. And the debut was a, a turf race at Ellis Park. Didn't really get involved from post 11 in a 12 horse field. Ended up finishing six that day, uh, but improved nicely second time out. A race originally scheduled for the turf. Um, moved to the main track at Ellis Park, stalked the pace, won by six lengths. Obviously going to be facing better, and just like I had mentioned a few minutes ago, these horses that win these maiden races that were originally scheduled for the turf don't really know much about them and, and the type of fields that they were facing. Uh, number eight in here is Major General for trainer Tad Pletcher, and this one, a game debut. Uh, got up there on the pace as the favorite, Six and a half furlongs at Saratoga on August 21st, and just battled throughout and gamely held on by a neck. Uh, the pedigree at least says that this distance should be within reach. They paid 420000 for this one, and he should be on the pace. Number nine, Guntown for trainer Steve Espusen. They paid 750000 for this son of Gunrunner. A prized is the dam sire, and the dam is Funhouse, and Funhouse was a stakes winner, a graded stakes winner at Santa Anita Park. I believe that was in 2004. Um, this one, good debut, seven furlongs at, at Ellis Park on a good track, it was post eight in a nine horse field, bumped at the start, rallied from seventh to finish third, second time out as the favorite, uh, was able to get on the pace, but the pace was slow. It was a one, one mile race. They went from seven furlongs to a mile on, on a fast track, second time out, stalked slow fractions, won by more than four lengths. It was a slow, early, fast, late effort. And that was, a, that was a nice effort as well, and earned a much better speed figure second time out. So I can definitely see this one being a contender. The 10 husband material. This one for trainer James Toner. Uh, this one is a son of American Pharaoh. And the debut, he was third, beaten 12 lengths at Pimlico on July 31st, then went to Delaware Park. Again, a race originally scheduled for the turf. It was on a, a wet main track, and it was only a three-horse field, and the pace was slow. And he set that slow pace, and he broke his maiden by 20 lengths. But there was only two horses in that race. It was a wet track, off the turf. Lots of question marks here. I wouldn't be surprised if he at least tried to get in some kind of forward position. Then finally, number 11, Bourbon Heist. Now, Bourbon Heist has run three times, and he's still a maiden, but he's got ability, and his speed figures improved in all three races. Finished sixth in the debut at Churchill Downs at five furlongs. Distance was too short. Six furlongs, second time out, rally from ninth place to miss by a head. Third career start, six and a half furlongs. And in that race, Major General, who's in this race, that was Todd Pletcher's runner that I mentioned a few minutes ago. This one rallied from fifth and finished a neck behind that one. That was a good effort. Clearly second best. He's improving, should like the distance. Post position is not great. They paid 100000 for this one. Ian Wilkes typically runs his horses into shape. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bourbon Heist was able to make some kind of noise some kind of noise in this race. I think that he, he could certainly get involved late and I wouldn't be shocked if he ran well. And he's actually going to be my live long shot in here. I don't have the morning line, but I think he's probably going to be a price. He's, he, obviously, he's a maiden. He's got the outside post. And he's one that I would like to get somewhere in the top three in the trifecta and, and maybe spice up those exotics a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make number eight, Major General, my second choice. I think he's going to be up on the, on the pace for Tad Pletcher. And if he can get out there and control the pace, or at least be part of a less than super fast pace, I think he can be there at the end. I'm going to make number nine, Gun Town, my second choice. I like the Steve Asmussen runners in here. Paid a lot for this one. Good effort, second time out. I think he's going to be stalking the pace. I am a bit concerned that he didn't earn strong pace ratings yet, and he's going to be probably be chasing faster fractions in here. I'm going to go with his stable mate, number six, Stellar Tap, as my top choice. Excellent debut, uh, clear runner-up with the next out winner, bred top and bottom to get the distance. He's going to be part of the pace, and, and if you look at his pace figures, best pace figures in the field. So I think if he wants the lead, it's probably there. If not, he'll be tracking the pace, and maybe he can at least be up on the pace and get the job done. So I'm going to make number six, Stellar Tap, 
my top choice in the Grade 3 Iroquois, then I will play him uh, with Guntown, uh, Major General, and then my live long shot Bourbon Heist. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I, this is obviously just the beginning of the Road to the Derby and, and Oak series that I'm going to be covering as many races, if not all the points races, uh, leading up to next year's Oaks and Kentucky Derby in my uh, Road to the Derby and Oaks video series. So make sure to check those out each time that there are points races. And that will do it for this video and for my two videos this week uh, for Saturday, September 18th. And I hope you make some good money in some of these races. So good luck at the races. And then I'll be back. Uh, and I'm going to do an early preview of the Pennsylvania Derby next. <music>